So the moment has arrived that so many of us have been waiting for. The fine folks at IK Multimedia have released their much anticipated Tonex plugin. Works as a plugin, works as a standalone app as well. And you might ask, what is Tonex? Well, I did a video previously on my channel showing off their new hardware box, the Tonex Capture, which was specifically designed to work in conjunction with the Tonex software ecosystem, which was just released today. And in the interest of full disclosure, uh, the fine folks at IK Multimedia did send me a free copy of Tonex along with the free Tonex Capture for me to check out. That is not going to affect my review of the product. Uh, as anybody knows, I'm a big fan of the IK Multimedia folks. I love Amplitude 5. I've done a bunch of videos about that. But I just wanted to let you know that I did receive this from them. I thank them very kindly for sending it over for me to check out so I can share my thoughts with you and see what this is actually all about. So what is Tonex again? Well, it is a piece of software that is going to allow us to capture profiles of our existing real tube amps if we so desire. It also has many built-in models that the folks at IK Multimedia have already profiled for us. And depending on the level of Tonex that you purchase, you're gonna get a different number of those. I just got this loaded up. I've taken a very quick peek at it just to familiarize myself with it, make sure that it was working on my computer. So far, so good, everything's fine. Without further ado, let's dive right in and get to what everybody's interested in. How does this sound? How does it work? What's it capable of? Let's go. So for now, I'm working within Cubase and using Tonex as a VST3 plugin. This is what we see when we open it up. So let's just run through here. We have up here, obviously, it's the Tonex name. We have a menu over here that tells us if we're online and logged into our account, we can restore purchases if we're having a problem with any of the models that we own. And it gives us the info about Tonex, that's fine. We have the Tone Net button that anybody who uses Amplitude 5 will recognize. We click on that and it takes us to the available presets that are up on Tone Net. The next line here is very interesting. We have an input meter. We have a little, shall we call it mixer control, which is going to allow us to control a lot of the controls on the amp here. You can see as I move the bass control here, it moves on the front of the amp, but it allows us to dive in a little bit deeper. We can adjust the bass frequency that that bass control is controlling. We have our mid, but we can also adjust the frequency. So we really dive in and get very picky about how we dial this in, even a cue or a bandwidth on that mid frequency, treble and treble frequency, presence, depth, and a mix control. So really handy stuff. As we move along, we have a noise gate. This is gonna allow us to control the noise gate again, the threshold is controlled down here also on the front of the amp, but this allows us to dive in deeper to get the release and depth we want. We would actually engage that or disengage it by the little button to the left, and that's gonna go for all of these. As we move on, we actually have the tone model amp that we're using, and we can see we can scroll through many, many here. There's 1,021 in total if we hit the all button, and amazing stuff. We can click on any one of those and load it into our amp slot can also engage or disengage that. We move on over to, let's get out of that, to our speaker cabs or our tone model cabs. And again, a whole pile of these. We can also load custom IRs if we so desire. And if we press this, we can see that we can go open up our dialogue and point to where our custom IRs are. We can even go down to our VIR down here as well and click on any of these. And then that allows us to come up here and just like an Amplitude 5, use kind of like the amp room, move our microphones around, choose different microphones, really incredible stuff. That's the little box at the end, if we so desire to go the VIR route, or we can just pick one of the existing tone model cabs that are already here. Let's, let's maybe do that for now. We'll pick maybe a, a 412. I don't know what this is. Let's go ball powered. All right. Then we move on. We have a compressor that we can engage or disengage. We have threshold gain and attack, and we can put it post or preamp. So we can have it hitting this, the guitar, or we can have it after the amp. That's a real favorite place of mine to have a compressor. We'll turn that off for now. We can also add reverb in. We have a choice of spring one, spring two, spring three, room and plate. I'm just gonna set that to room reverb for now. And as I mentioned before, if I pick the VIR down here, we do have the ability to tweak our microphones, move them around, and mix between the two microphones. Really, really cool stuff. But for now, let's just go back 
and we'll stick to a cab we have here. Now, as we move on, we see over here that we have the tone model collections and we can go through all the different models that we have here. We can either buy them. It tells us what package it's included with. You can see this is included in Tonex SE. As we move on, something very cool here, the Overdrive Special based on a Dumble ODS-50, uh, included in Tonex Max, which I have. So if I click on one of these, it gives me the info here, but it also gives me the amps down here. So I could go to something like the Dumble ODS and they have a nice graphic of it come here. So I can choose which amp model I want from there as well. Down here, it gives us more information about the tone model we've chosen, the cab name that goes along with it, the amp name, the channel, and all the info we want as far as microphone and whatnot as well. We have different presets over here that are based off of these amps. We can also just go to the presets tab as well, and it gives us a bunch of presets that can be saved, and we can see that we can save our own or alter them in some way, hit save, and we can overwrite that if we so desire. So this is our little save button right here. This is our filter button. We can choose whether we want something high gain for electric guitar, the style of music, the pickup type, and so on and so forth. So assuming that the tone model was actually tagged the proper way, this could be an extremely useful feature as well. And we can also search for different things. Let's say I wanted something with drive. It narrows it down to this drive preset. This is a really cool little feature now that could easily be missed. If we come over and pick this boosted ODS, I can play my guitar with this. <laughs> I could come over to this little window right here and play a pre-existing file that the IK Multimedia folks have given us. If I hit my play button, We can change the amp model and the preset that we're using while that's playing so that we don't have to actually play. Our actual guitar ourselves to be able to listen into what it can do. So those are some of the tones we have. If we if we switch through some different ones here. The beautiful part is if we pick one like this that uh, we come across that we like. <laughs> We're not just stuck to that particular tone. We can adjust the gain. We can adjust the bass. We could say maybe that has too much gain. We can come in and add in the compressor. Play with that until we're happy. We know this is a little Soldano SLO with a Marshall 1960 BV cab. This is sounding great already. If I turn that noise gate off, we do have some noise it's gotten rid of, and we have a really nice tone really quickly. I gotta say the feel of this is amazing. The tones are amazing. 
this really feels like playing through an amp, which I kind of expected it to. So really interesting stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to go through here and play through a million different tones. I think a lot of folks are probably really interested in how the capturing process to capture your own amps might actually come across sounding. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to do a lot more videos with Tonex in the future, and we'll look at some of the other tones that we have in here. And I'll probably do some dialing in videos for some of the existing packs if anybody would really be interested in seeing those. So really impressive stuff so far. That's a quick overview of what we will see when we first open this up. And now we want to check out the whole process of the modeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusty Rev Generator 100R amp here. I'm going to see if I can't make a pretty cool Tonex model. Let's see how this whole modeling process actually works. So here I have the standalone Tonex app, and you'll notice one difference. Uh, everything else seems to be pretty much the same as what I just showed you within the VST3 plugin, except up here we have a player tab and a modeler tab. And we're gonna be really interested in trying out the modeler tab. So when I switch over to this, you'll notice that it gives me a sort of a checklist timeline across the top. Welcome, type, setup, check, capture, training, review, skin, and save. So it welcomes us to the Tonex machine modeler. It says this setup guide will walk you through each step of the tone modeling process. It's designed to to help you make the proper connections and get the best quality tone model possible. It also shows us the minimum requirements we will need to be able to create our Tonex profile. So I'm going to hit the next button and see what this brings us to. So it's going to give us the instrument selection, select the instrument, whether it's guitar or bass. I'm going to choose guitar, hit next. So what we see we have is we have amp and cab, complex rig, stomp, amp, stomp, and amp. So I'm gonna just do amp and cab. So I have my Rev Generator 100R amp set up going into a Rev 212 cabinet with Vintage 30s. I have that mic'd up with two microphones. I have it mic'd up with a Lewitt Audio Dynamic mic and with a Cascade Fathead microphone, which I really love. It says here we can model an amp head and cabinet or a combo by using one or two microphones. Okay, I'm gonna choose amp and cab and hit next. Now, I've already pre-configured this. First things first, it's asking me which audio interface I want to use. And it's asking me for the technology, and I'm using ASIO. The device is a Focusrite Claret Plus 4 Pre. So I've chosen that. I've set my outputs of where my monitor speakers are hooked up to, and that's output one and two. Now, I am also set up with Tonex Capture as my capture box. So it's going to be used both as a reamp device to send the file that Tonex needs to be able to do the capture, and you'll see that in the next steps. And that's coming out of output three on my Focusrite Claret audio interface. I've also mic'd my amp cab with two microphones. I'm going to probably just use the Cascade Fathead for this example. And those two microphones are feeding input five and input six on my Claret audio interface. A little side note is I'm actually feeding both of them through a really nice warm audio WA273 mic pre and EQ first. Really nice microphone preamp. And that's gonna feed into the line inputs, which is input five and six of the Focusrite audio interface. So it looks like everything's ready to go here. So I'm gonna hit next. Now it's gonna ask me to play my guitar. I'm gonna connect my instrument to the channel one on my Focusrite audio interface. And it's gonna ask me to check the input level. Now it's asking me to get it into the yellow without clipping. Normally I would just keep that at zero, but maybe just a little tiny bit hot. We'll try that for now, that seems to be good. Now I can set the attenuation of the reamp box here to get it so that it sounds like the rig is supposed to sound. Now here is the tone. You're not gonna probably hear much here other than ambient mic pickup of my vocal mic. I'm pretty happy with that, so I am going to move on to the next step. Now we're gonna check the mic input levels and make sure that I'm getting an appropriate signal. Now I can do this a couple of ways. I can use my live input. Or I can use those same audio files that the folks at IK Multimedia have provided for us. Mm -hmm. 
and everything seems to be working. Now, do I want to blend the two microphones or do I want to have just one or the other? I think I'm going to go all the way over to mic number two here, which is going to be my Cascade Fathead mic. Okay, we're all set. We can go to the next step. Now, this is a little bit of a longer process, and I'm going to let you watch this all the way through. It does take a little bit of time, so we're going to kind of just sit back. I don't want to edit this out because I want folks to see what this capturing process is all about. I will remove myself from the screen, allow it to capture, and I will be right back.
So there you have it. Just another little side point here is that I was not playing any of that. That is the file that Tonex uses to do the capture. So now we have this big green check mark. I'm going to go on to next. And this is the place where Tonex actually trains itself and creates this capture. So it has the accuracy level. If we choose fast, it says fastest and less accurate for older computers only. Default is suggested for good accuracy and an average training time. Advanced is maximum accuracy and longer training time. Now, from what I've been told, advanced takes about twice the amount of time. As this says, for older computers only, obviously the speed that this is going to work at is going to be very dependent on our computer power. So if we have a newer, powerful computer, I'm guessing that the training is going to be a lot faster. So let's go with the default setting. I'm going to hit next. And now it says model training. Click the start button to begin the AI training. During the training process, you can freely explore tone models from the player tab. Now, as far as I understand, this could take a little while. I'm not going to sit here with it. I will keep my screen capture software running so that I can get a bit of a time on this to see how long it actually takes. And then I will come back and we'll see what our results are. I haven't done one of these. I'm just as interested in seeing what the results are as you are. Right, so we're back after all of that. It looks like on my machine, which has these specs that I'll put up on the screen, that this model training took right in around one hour to complete. So this is what happens. I'm getting a nice check mark here. It says your tone model is now ready. Move on to the next step to review your new tone model. So I'll hit next, we move on. I have my audio set up and connections here. Uh, set up the same way. It says, before testing your new tone model, review your audio settings first. Check that your monitors and instrument are connected to the according schematic below with your live rig connected. You'll be able to compare it against your tone model. I'm going to hit next here. So here is the sound of the tone model. <laughs> I go over to the real rig. I'm hearing my actual amp in the room here. I'm not sure what's really being recorded onto the video recording though, but if I switch back and forth, we'll see what this is and I'll figure this out in editing. So we can also play these files that IK Multimedia gives us.
So I guess if I'm happy with that, uh, then we can move on and hit next. Now I get to customize my tone model. I can pick a skin for whatever amp I feel best kind of represents the front end of this Rev amplifier that I have here. And I don't know, maybe I'll pick this one here. I'll hit next. Now I can enter the tone model name here. Let's call this Rev Generator 100R. I can put in a description if I want and the amp name, we'll call it Rev Gen. Uh, the character I am going to put in here as high gain, uh, let's say channel three, if I could actually type would be better, channel three. Oh, I'm running out of space here. Okay, let's just do this. Channel three, uh, cab name rev 212, configuration is a 212 cabinet. We're gonna go cascade fat head microphone, and uh, we'll even go warm WA273 mic pre. So you can really do a nice job saving all these tags. And now we can hit save and go to player, and there's my amp model. <laughs> nice stuff and by hitting control and clicking I can go back to default settings on here I can throw my noise gate on if I so desire <laughs> So there you have it. What do you guys think? Look, I'm going to have a lot more content based around Tonex in the future. Uh, this was just my overview. I was kind of figuring this out as I went along with you guys. I literally received this 30 to 60 minutes before I started recording the video. I, I loaded it up. I really had no problems. It loaded fine. I tried to do a quick little profile capture and I made the cardinal sin of being impatient. I hadn't rebooted my computer after installing. Once I did that, everything was smooth. I did have a little thing. It was telling me that it was having a hard time doing the actual profiling, but that was sorted out by simply rebooting. And th this was basically a completely effortless process. I installed this and I was up and running in no time. Everything worked beautifully. And I hope that that was a good overview. I really encourage you guys, if you're at all in the market for anything like this, this is really incredible. The included tones are amazing. Uh, the fact we can capture our own amps is just incredible also. I think the IK Multimedia folks have really changed the game here. I know people hate when you say these game changer type things, but they really have. We can now have this piece of software in our computer and profile amps. The results are spectacular. The feel is great. And I I think the tool set that they've put together, being able to add some compression and reverb, change the cabs out using the VIR technology as well is really spectacular. And I think they really have a home run here. I will have a link below to where you can go purchase Tonex if you are interested in it. I think it is a great buy. I really don't have anything bad to say about it at all. And I hope you guys enjoyed this look at it. Please like the video and please share it with anybody who you think would get some enjoyment or use out of watching it. And also please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.